Our guest on this episode is a talk show host and model. At age 15, her first modeling job was a UNICEF um, charity fashion show in Lagos. She is a journalist who graduated from American University. She has worked with prestigious organizations such as Discovery Communications, Fox 5 News, the AARP Foundation, and the Foreign Policy Initiative. In 20 um, in 2014, she earned a master's in international public relations and global corporate communications from New York University, while concurrently working for the Peace Building Commission of the United Nations. She's currently the founder of the EDIA Project and a talk show host of Style 101, Nigeria's version of Fashion Police, and You Got Issues on Spice TV Africa. Um, let's make welcome... In the Plus TV Africa way, the beautiful and delectable Idia Aisye. Thank you for having me. Good Welcome to have to you here. Show. Okay, so just to correct one thing, I'm no longer hosting those shows. Oh. oh. Yes. So I'm okay. focused solely on the Idia Project. So what's the Idia Project about? So Idia stands for the International Development Initiative in Africa, and it's basically a platform that showcases just positive news coming out of Africa. Mm. Okay, so some of your agendas for EDA is um, education, empowerment, and eradication of, of poverty. poverty. So um, my question is, do you think um, poverty can be eradicated completely? I don't think that it can be eradicated overnight. But I think that, of course, like there are different instruments that can be put in place we to alleviate it. We must always have the poor. Of course, but there can be different instruments put in place to alleviate it because it's drastically getting worse and worse and worse. And I think it's because it's something that a lot of people are becoming jaded about. As you uh -huh. notice, like in many countries, not even just in African countries or developing nations, there's a lot of social, political, and economic apathy. People mm. don't care anymore. They feel like their views don't count, their votes don't count. They're just like, uh -huh. you know, mm. government does one thing. And unless it's like time to vote or whatever, we just feel like we're helpless in a way. And we are basically trying to put stories out that encourage people by showing them what other people like them are doing. So mm -hmm. the, Dan the Otadola see what the Dangotes are doing. The, the mm. Glow sees what MTN is doing in terms of CSR. Mm. You know, you see what she's doing, ETC. So we're telling stories at all levels that can speak to mm. people at those different levels mm -hmm. about what people are doing to move various African countries forward. All right, that so what are you focusing sense. on first? Is it education or? No, so the part that focuses on education, poverty and empowerment is our NGO. So those are the, the fields we focus on when we give back. The IDEA project itself is a documentary that applauds people that are moving mm. the continent forward. So the documentary series focuses on all fields. So if it's manufacturing, mining, banking, whatever it is, and you're doing, you're creating huge impact, we tell your story. I don't know if that makes any sense. Uh, so in your project, I mean, you want to do this to tell the Nigerian story also, right? And you've worked um, with um, international organizations absolutely. outside Nigeria for media. Mm -hmm. So what, what would you say is the difference between the way we tell our stories and how they tell theirs and what can we learn from them? I think it's not really much... I don't think the issue is more a difference than the fact that we allow the Western world to tell our story, our and it's story, gone on yeah. for so long. Uh -huh. So if you look at the past, we've had covers that called Africa the third world. Mm -hmm. You know, we've had covers that would say Africa's woes, um, poverty in Africa, mm -hmm. the diseased nations. The, this, and who who gives one nation the right to call it's other nations of the world mm -hmm. third world or underdeveloped? If you notice, that notion was now changed from underdeveloped to developing, developing. countries. Mm -hmm. who call you can't say somewhere is underdeveloped. It's, it's technically not even a correct term, mm -hmm. right? So we let the Western world tell our stories for such a long time that now, even though a lot of people were interested in giving and helping various, I don't know, fields in Africa. Mm -hmm. So for instance, charity, or you want to help this child go to school, whatever. It got to a point that people start telling themselves, poverty is never going to end. This is never going to change. Look at Africa. Every day there's uproar, there's war, there's corruption, ETC. And people are jaded. So they're just like, why should I give to this charity when there's a million starving babies? We can't save all of them. I've actually heard people say that before. Mm -hmm. You know, people are tired. So something like this shows them what areas, what is working in. Mm -hmm. And if I see that I've, like, I've given money in the past and he's used the money, for instance, mm -hmm. in a good way, mm -hmm. you are encouraged crap, to give yeah. more. But if you keep coming from that angle of aid, 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 mm -hmm. and it seems like nothing is being done, people don't want to help. Mm -hmm. But regardless, you still haven't answered my question. I'm looking at the media and how we can tell our story now. Because if 
you so say platforms okay platforms like this okay are the way we can tell our story because what i'm trying to say is we need more platforms mm -hmm. that tell it from their mm -hmm. point of view mm -hmm. a lot of times we I have a lot of outlets like that are just Trump. focused on boko haram will trend faster okay. than which Any, is why I was saying, what can we do differently? Because we are I, trying yeah, to tell our story, yeah. right? So if you say we are telling our stories and we want to be able to be the platform that people will come to to say, um, I want to know about Nigeria, I want to know about Africa, I want to know about West Africa, this mm -hmm. is the platform. How do we train ourselves to be the best when it comes to journalism? To be the, Because at the end of the day, we look up to these people. They brought this to us so right? you're not so, understanding what i'm saying okay i'm saying that there are a lot of people mm -hmm. currently doing amazing work wow. across africa the okay. stories are and not we don't being see told that. enough enough and if okay. they're not being told enough they're also not being told on as many platforms as can be told does that okay. make any sense so a lot of the platforms for instance when the forbes thing happened with the mm -hmm. invictus mm -hmm. guy uh -huh. Nobody would wanted to talk about anything else. Like that's what or everybody was shocked, everybody was focused on that. If kidnapping happens, that's what everybody's focused on. And we want to get to a point where we people can, can still see the good. <coughs> I don't know if that makes any yeah, sense. Not mm -hmm. just so the, negative side. the more the more stories we tell like this, the more we empower people to do more good and the more we empower people to start platforms like this. Does that make any sense? Yeah. Okay, yeah, it does, does now. All okay. right, so being a sorry, go ahead. <laughs> go for Please. it. Um, since you started your foundation, what have you achieved? Oh, a lot. So um, the first part was the documentary series is now launching in exactly, I think, six weeks. Mm -hmm. So first we're showcasing it in France in three weeks. Right. And um, well, first we started by working with other organizations. So organizations focused on rape, education, and so forth. Mm -hmm. And even though I had a bit of a stump this year, I made sure we gave money to other organizations that were currently active so that they could provide uniforms in schools. Like we looked at their different agendas and if they were good, we worked with them. So a few of the organizations we worked with, there's an organization called I2 Can Learn. And what they do is they provide uniforms for kids in school. And we thought what the girl was doing was amazing because she started it as a youth copper, for oh, instance, okay. exactly. And then, do, and then with our own funds, what we did is we went out and we started like covering what, for instance, Microsoft is doing in terms of like training girls mm. all the way in like Bauchi. We're covering the oil sector. There's a lot of stories that people don't know about, you know, when they talk about the Niger Delta, for instance, and the pollution that took place, mm. a lot of people don't know the backstory, and I can't talk much about it because yeah. I want you to watch <laughs> the documentary. So we covered a lot of that and, you know, who's responsible and what's being done now to move it forward. Does that make any sense? Yeah, yeah. And then, um, and then one episode I'm really excited about is development in Africa, but from the point of the perspective of women. Now that mm -hmm. one I'm super excited. So it's 10 powerful women in various fields and you get to see their journeys, their stories and the impacts that they've made. So that's the episode that I'm actually like going mad super about. Excited. Yeah, exactly. All right, interesting. I okay, know before you carry on with that question, let's yeah, go on yeah. a quick break. Yeah. When we come back, we'll definitely carry on the conversation with Idia Aisi and Oprah Redbark. <laughs> Welcome back. This is Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, and we still have Idia Asien. She's the founder of the Idia Project. All right, okay, um, so Ewa. I know that um, one of the objectives, basically mm -hmm. the main objective of your foundation, mm -hmm. is to put Africa out there in a good light. Mm -hmm. And a lot of things have happened recently that mm -hmm. has not Absolutely. even helped that. Absolutely. So what was your reaction and what do you think you can do to help the particular, I'm talking about the xenophobia and the that fraud is, issue yeah. here. Okay, so the xenophobia episode is just like beginning, well not even 20% to where we're going, we're trying to go with our episode. But what mm -hmm. we're trying to do is when we see a negative story like that, we just try to follow up and see what's been done to curb the situation. Mm. So how Ramaphosa is working with Buhari, stuff like that. Mm. We're trying to follow on top of that, which individuals or organizations are catering towards making the situation better, mm. both here and in South Africa. So that's where we are now with that episode. But to be honest, in terms of my reaction, when I saw the, the Forbes thing, I was like, <laughs> when, I the <laughs> ah, when I see like, you know, Fatou I, I just, mm. I freeze for a second because I'm like, you're These don't help. Do and like now, look at the, the girls being suffocated in, is it in Port Harcourt? Port Harcourt. Port Harcourt, yeah. it's, it's really not easy because you're trying to convince people that, oh, this is a wonderful place to travel to. You know, everything is, is not perfect. But, mm -hmm. you know, 
these are the areas, these are the places to go to, these mm -hmm. are the, the parts, the areas that are developing, mm -hmm. this is what's going on now with our healthcare system, this is what, yes, yeah, so these amounts of children are out of school, but here, here, and here, and here, and here are people mm -hmm. that are trying to make this better. Mm -hmm. But then they now see like, oh, bomb blast or something, and they're just like, <laughs> Hmm. Sign, not saying. again. <laughs> so it's, 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 it's the hardest thing to want to do because every time I take a step forward, I feel like we take 20 steps back. Mm. But somebody has to do it. And I feel like a lot of people will eventually start doing it. And, that's, and I guess that's my mission. That's the point. So, so the president great. of South Africa sent um, his envoy to apologize on behalf of yeah. South Africans. Do yeah. you think we should accept that apology? I think... I think the same way people would say, oh, Nigerians are fraudsters. Not all Nigerians are fraudsters. Are you a fraudster? No. Nope. Are you a fraudster? No. Are you a fraudster? No. Exactly. So I, I, are you a fraudster? Of course not. <laughs> so I think that, yes, some people have gone out and done this really horrible thing. Really, really, really horrible. Some mm. would say unforgivable thing. But you cannot say that all South Africans are like but, that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I think, obviously, for the president to be apologizing, whether I send an envoy or he came by himself, it is him apologizing on behalf of the nation and it's people that are serious minded in the nation saying we are sorry for this. Mm -hmm. I think it's the only way to ensure peace. Mm -hmm. What would you rather, that they kill more Nigerians? Mm -hmm. No, but um, you know, um, there's another batch coming in, I don't know. Of Nigerians? Some, yeah, of yeah. Nigerians yeah. coming in. So are you saying they should just stay back, they shouldn't come in? I'm not saying they should stay back. I think that, of course, until things are, are, are sorted out, mm -hmm. why would you want to stay in a place that is unsafe for you? Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I think that an apology is a step in the right direction yeah. towards mm -hmm. working yeah. to make things better. And it's not like they're saying, oh yeah, well, my people were right anyway. Because a country can't decide to do that. What are you going to do? Mm -hmm. right. So you're a good authority to speak on... Um, um, the practice of journalism and um, am I? Yeah, <laughs> because um, you're, you're an award-winning TV host and okay. all that. Mm -hmm. So, do you think that journalism is being practiced properly in Nigeria, especially with this new trend of sensationalism? Honestly, in terms of being the right authority to speak on anything, all I can speak. Um, in terms of is my opinion. Mm. I think that just like public relations, mm. just like marketing, advertising, whatever it is, just like from before it was about doctors, engineers, bankers mm. and lawyers, sure. and now, you know, Af Africa and even specifically Nigeria is opening itself up to a lot of practices that were not like before. Before, musicians were not glorified the way we are glorifying whiskey right. and coke. Mm. So I think that these things take time. Mm. And I think, um, I think that there will be mistakes. Something like journalism, there will be mistakes because there's always different opinions, yeah. different perspectives. Right. There are lots of people lobbying for their own interests. Mm. And I think that we may not be perfect, but I think it's a field that is still shaping itself properly. Now, yeah. journalism has been around for a very long time, but I think that now that there is, I wouldn't call it freedom, mm -hmm. but there's more um, accountability ensured mm. via social media platforms and everybody's starting their own kind of news outlet or mm. you know Blood, exactly you know. Mm. I think it's different now it's different now and things are more sensitive mm. but I don't think I don't think we can say because there's a lot of fake news um, circulating mm. that it's not being practiced properly because mm -hmm. the same issues they're having with whatsapp here same issues they're having with whatsapp in Everywhere. India and mm. all over sure. people will always spread fake news because mm. some people are idiots all okay. right before we let you go I know our time is almost all but let's yeah. touch on the modeling part of your career mm. okay. how is that area treating you I am not a practicing model in terms of like runway or mm -hmm. any of that right mm -hmm. um what happened was you know i was a really young girl i worked with a couple of brands i was so i was so in love with modeling oh my god when i was younger i thought i was going to be like a naomi campbell i was so <laughs> but then i'm the kind of person that even though i had a dream i did what i had to do so yeah. i knew i had to go to school i knew i had to always have an internship a good job blah 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 to survive right and then you come to nigeria and you're like okay i'm gonna go into television in nigeria and then all of a sudden, all the stuff that you've been working hard for that just seems so hard to attain, mm -hmm. now starts coming at you. Oh, come on, model for my clothing line. We'll pay you this. And you're like, wait, what? you pay me this? And they're like, yeah, because you're not a normal model. Now you have platforms that can mm -hmm. genuinely promote what we're selling, mm -hmm. right? So it's different from just being a regular model. You can be a spokesperson or anything you want. This has been the best and worst year of my life because I've gotten, what, two endorsements this year. Like, mm -hmm. it's been a sweet year. It's been a sweet year. It's, yeah, we have partnerships with <laughs> bank for investments for two, mm -hmm. and and it's been a really good year. So in in that sense, modeling is a very good, a very good 
how do I say, consequence of what I do as a TV girl. Let, let me, let me ask her. This is the part. No, <laughs> this is the part. Like, you'll so be glad let, I let asked this question. What you do on, you'll be glad I asked this question. Our time is up, really. We have to go. You know what? This part concerns three of us. Oh, goodness. Oh, Lord. Please. I was on your Instagram page and I saw that um, procedure about freezing belly fat and uh -huh. all that. So enlighten us on that because I'm interested. Can well, we before it? before journalism or whatever it is that we're doing here or modeling or whatever, first, I'm a woman. And women have a lot of concerns about, you know, looking their best. And mm. I want to look my best. Going to the gym is hard, especially when your schedule is crazy. Very hard. So, I mean, <laughs> Be Natural has all these amazing procedures. Mm. And I was like, hey, I want to know what fat freezing is like. It's not painful. It wasn't painful for me. But it literally sucks all your tummy fat to like the to into the yeah oh. into the machine, and then what it does is that it will freeze <laughs> at like minus fourteen degrees oh. yeah. for like forty minutes. And what happens is that over the next two three weeks, you start to see a huge change in that region. So that, that's huge. Ah, for the okay, good but that's how we wrap up. <laughs> ah, <for laughs> the the of it is affordable. Very thank affordable. you so much for watching, and of course, thank you to our guest Thank, for being you, here. For thank you for coming. My thank you as always to go to Michael Ankos, Ewa Ritu, and Ifeolu Shankaya. Oh. Ah, my name is Elsie Godwin. Say thank you for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow.